Welcome to the Mighty Baker Podcast, your go-to source for elevating your baking skills and business. I'm Pete Tidwell, your host, baking coach and advocate for mental health. Get ready to make more dough in and out of the kitchen while nourishing your mind along the way. As a passionate baker, I believe that baking is not just about creating delicious treats. It's also a powerful tool for nurturing our mental well-being. Throughout this podcast, I'll be sharing a wealth of mindset-related content, empowering you to cultivate a positive and resilient mindset that will drive your baking success. Join our thriving communities at themightybaker.com where you'll connect with like-minded bakers, both those who bake for pure enjoyment and those pursuing their baking dreams as a business. Together, we'll foster a supportive environment where we can learn, grow, and inspire one another. In each episode of the Mighty Baker podcast, we'll delve into a world of exciting ideas and discussions. From mastering intricate recipes to refining your techniques, we'll explore the intricacies of baking with a focus on continuous improvement. Moreover, we'll dive into the business side of baking, equipping you with the knowledge to run a successful and fulfilling bakery. But it doesn't stop there. We'll prioritize nurturing your mental health, discussing mindfulness practices, self-care strategies, and the importance of maintaining a healthy work-life balance or integration, however you want to look at it. Because when we take care of our minds, we can truly thrive in all aspects of our baking journey and our lives. So grab your apron and let's embark on this transformative baking adventure together. The Mighty Baker Podcast is here to help you unlock your baking potential, expand your business horizons, and prioritize your well-being. Get ready to make more dough, embrace a resilient mindset, and create delicious moments that will leave a lasting impact. Let's rise to new heights with the Mighty Baker Podcast. Let's go. Um, Okay. Hey, what's up, you guys? Pete Tidwell here with the Mighty Baker Podcast. I am so excited to be here with you for episode 62. And this one is going to be entitled My Is It Cake Story. And it may not be super, super intensive. I'm not going to go into a super crazy details, but I am going to share some of my thoughts and feelings, um, some of the process, um, and some of the things and reactions to watching the show. So, with that said, If you have not watched season two of Is It Cake on Netflix yet, you may not want to listen to this episode and you may want to go and listen or watch all of the episodes because there are going to be spoilers in the episode. It's been out for about a week and a half now, so most people should have seen it by now, but I know there's a lot of people that are still watching it. So if you are listening and you haven't watched yet, go watch because there are some spoilers in here. Anyway... So with that said, I'm going to remind, rewind back to early 2022 when I received a phone call from a production company asking if I wanted to be on an upcoming season of Is It Cake on Netflix? And of course, my answer to that question was a resounding yes, because I had watched the show and I have not been on a show since 2019. And so in my mind, I've been trying to look for different shows and I've applied to a few others um, and I really was hoping for something to kind of come up and it just kind of came up out of the blue and I was so, so grateful. And so we went through that process. I won't go into that, but it ended up being filmed at the end of 2022 and now fast forward, the show is out. So I'm just going to talk for, talk to my experience just a little bit because, you know, since then it's been quite a few months And I've watched the season twice now. I went down to Vegas last weekend as well because they had a display down there that was incredible, by the way. It was only a five-day display, but it was at Madame Tussauds Wax Museum in Las Vegas. And it was incredible, you guys. It was so fun. So they invited a couple um, people from our cast and a couple people from last season's cast plus the -the behind-the-scenes decorators from Is It Cake? to put together a display 
to promote the show, and it was incredible, you guys. It was so good. So go on my Instagram, and you can see some of those pics. Um, I'm putting together a video about that. Hopefully, I'll have that out soon. But it was such a fun experience to go down there, and a lot of the cast made it down there. Not all of us made it down there, but there was a few of us that made it down there, and it was such a fun experience. And by doing that and also watching all the episodes a couple of times, it just brought back all the emotions, just flooding back in from my experience on this show. And it was a good experience. It was so fun because it was... I have never been this close with a cast on these shows before. Um, My Halloween Baking Championship was very close. We were a very tight-knit family. So those of you that are listening, all of you, I'm not dissing on that at all because you guys are my family. You're my Halloween Baking Championship family, and I love you guys. This group was very similar, I would say, in because I don't think I can compare the two, because I just love people, and I love my friends, and they're all my friends. But this group of people was so great, because what happened is we got there, and we all are coming into the season, and all of us kind of figured that everything was just going to be like season one, probably similar to you that watched it at home, right? If you were a, if you were a fan of season one, and you're watching season two, your hopes are it's probably going to be about the same. But when we got there, we realized that it wasn't the same and that it was elimination and that all through it was just a wild ride. But the reason I set that stage is because what that did in my mind is it brought us all closer together as a cast. We were family. We were there to help support each other and help cheer each other on and help each other in the kitchen. You'll notice during the show, they show this quite a few times when we're giving each other like tips and helping each other with different things and trying to bounce ideas off each other a little bit. And I really loved that aspect of it. And that happened off camera so, so, so much. It wasn't just on camera. It was very, a very kind, wonderful group of humans that we had on the cast for Is It Cake? And I count myself extremely blessed and very grateful for the opportunity that I have to know each of those humans. So Jared, Justin, Liz, Quartarius, Kayla, Dania, Spirit, Miko, Elizabeth, all of you, I love you all so much. Hopefully you're listening um, and hopefully I can get some of them on my podcast. I've asked them all, so... Hopefully we can get some of them on my podcast as interviews because I want to interview each of them and talk to them about how the show has helped them, how they're moving forward, what they're doing next, what their projects are. So maybe you guys, maybe this episode can help, help talk them into signing up to come be a guest on my podcast because I would love to interview all of them on here. And so jumping into this, we had such a great experience. Um, We got to bond on many different occasions Um, We had a cast manager named Christy, and her team were just absolutely the best. They made sure that they took care of us. The production team was great. And I do need to put a note in for this because I've been on three Food Network shows previous to this, and this production company that did Is It Cake was fabulous. They did such a good job, and they just did a good job on everything. They were very organized on things and I very much appreciated that because I'm very much of an organizational type person and I just, I want things to be organized, understood. Anyway. So when all of us cast members were able to get onto the set the first time, it was an amazing experience. I don't think I'll ever be able to relive that again, right? I can look back and I can remember that, but I remember when all of us walked into the studio for the first time, it was like, whoa, this is really happening. We're actually here. There's Mikey, there's this, there's that. Everything was real right in that moment, and it was just amazing. So we all just jumped right into the competition. And first off, we were very surprised because some of the things had changed a little bit, Um, knowing that we were only going to have one decoy versus the three decoys that they had in season one was very much of a surprise for us. So we were a little bit shocked there. But 
the sh- but the thing that it did, I think it helped all of us up our game and be like, okay, well, if they're going to do that, then we're going to bring our A game the, as much as we possibly can. And so we did. And the show is very structured. You know, it's very, it's very differently structured than any of the other shows that I've done before. Um, all the other ones are very much in line with just the skills of the cake decorator, right? And like really like everything's based on the skills of the cake decorator. This show is very much set up like a game show almost, right? Where you have the cake decorators that are very, very good at what they do. You have the judges that come in and it's ultimately up to them to choose. And there's all the other things going on. A lot of it's up to chance and you're playing a game. You're trying to do your best and go in there. And all of us brought our A game and worked so hard on these episodes. And I hope that came through on the show. And I believe that it did. Um, but just know that there's so many things behind the scenes and so many things that never show up on these episodes that you never see. And there's a lot of hard work and artistry and incredible talent from these people. So those of you that are listening to this or watching on YouTube, go follow all of my cast members, go follow them, go support their business, go help them. And if you live in their area, go buy something from them, go support their business, whatever that looks like. Um, because all of us are artists. Some of us are business owners. All of, most of us are business owners. All of us are artists. And we're all trying to make a way in this world as an artist, right? And we're trying to make our lives built on this. And so if you out there can help support us, that is very, very, very much appreciated. And that's just a little plug for that. Support your local business people, regardless if it's if it's these people or others. Make sure you're out there supporting your local people. So, you know, with less decoys and elimination, it added a whole new level of pressure that we didn't really think we were going to have. And I think we all thought it was just going to be exactly the same as season one. But since it wasn't, we all came in, grew together like a family, and we played a hard battle and played the game and had a great time, as you guys saw on the show. Every time somebody got sent home, though, it was very heartbreaking. It was it was one of those things where it got so real at the end of every episode where we're like, oh, yeah, somebody has to go home again. And it was always such a heart-wrenching thing because you never knew if it was going to be you. And there's so much just tension and stress that's just there, um, especially in those moments when you're sitting there waiting to find out, like, did they pick your cake? Did they not? Um, whether they like your cake, whether they didn't, whether you're up for elimination, whether you are eliminated, whether you are a winner, all those things. So as the episodes go on and on, the stakes keep getting higher, the stress gets stronger, and it's just overall intense. And I do want to note, of course, remember, there's spoilers in this, but I'm in all the episodes in one way or the other. And of course... I was so disappointed when I got eliminated with Dania. Both of us were. We got to sit in the elimination room afterwards and chat for a few before going into our interviews. And both of us were just, we're, we were gut hurt, right? We were very hurt because we we're like, wow, we could have, we were so close to making it into the final. But both of us, but two people had to be eliminated. So regardless of what happened out of those five people, two people needed to get eliminated out of there. And that was really hard because I was really, I was really looking forward to and wanting, of course, I think everybody in our whole cast wanted to make it as far as they could. And in that moment, I remember thinking like, oh, I almost made it. And then Elizabeth asked me to be an assistant for her in the final. And when she first asked me, I was like, oh man, I don't know if I have enough energy to go back in the kitchen and bake more because that was such an emotional thing for me. But I remember that night at my hotel room and just deciding that I was gonna show up 200% for her and help her put forth all the, put forth all the energy that I had into baking for her and helping her. 
And I sure did. It was amazing. It was a super fun experience. Um, Elizabeth, she handed me some of her recipes. I made, I think, like six or seven different recipes. We did two different flavors. She wanted two different flavor profiles. And I was just there to do things that she told me to do. So I executed recipes. Um, I baked the cakes. I made fillings, all those kind of things while she was working on the decorating because there were certain jobs that the assistant were and were not able to do. And so most of the part I was doing baking and all those kind of things. And it was such a fun experience to be beside her during that and during that experience. Um, and she is truly an amazing artist. And seriously, to see it in first hand is pretty, pretty dang incredible. The other thing I wanted to mention is while I was there helping Elizabeth, I got to witness over, you know, oversee. I got to see Spirit over there making her cake with Liz. And then I got to look on the other side and I got to watch Miko make the most amazing masterpiece of a cake I have ever seen. He painted the Mona Lisa out of cake. I can't even, I can't even comprehend. When he said he was doing that, I was like, are you serious? That's incredible. And I'm like, I, I can't wait to see this. And I got to witness that firsthand watching him do that. And it shows it on the show. It shows a time lapse of him painting. But he painted the Mona Lisa in a kitchen with edible food coloring. Dude, Miko is amazing. And I just want to say that that artistry that he did there was just incredible. And I just wanted to make sure I point that out. Um, but the artistry of the whole show was amazing. I was very pleased with the cakes that I executed. I executed my boxing gloves. Um, I did the cell phone for the 90s episode in the phone book. I was very happy with that one. Um, I also got to do a little toothbrush holder with toothbrush and toothpaste. Loved that one. Um, fooled the judges on that one, so that was exciting. Um, and then my final one was the little drink holder caddy. And that was the most difficult cake that I made. That had so many different aspects and pieces. It took a long time to do that and a lot of different parts in there. I made little individual popcorn and popcorn bags and a hot dog and a soda bottle or a soda can, um, or cup and the whole ho holder and everything. And I was so proud of myself, you guys. I was so proud of myself. And I'm so excited that I had that opportunity because now watching back through those, it just brings back fond memories. It brings back hard memories because competitions are always hard. You never come away from a competition, unless you win, of course. Um, you never come away from a competition um, not having emotions behind it. And of course, even if you win a competition, you still have emotions behind it. Back in 2016 and 2017, myself and my assistant Katrina won Cake Wars on Food Network, and that was incredible. That feeling of winning something is so fun and so great. Um, but every single one has those emotions, and you remember the learnings from it. And that's something that I really like to reflect on when I when I watch the shows again and just remember my experiences, what did I learn from the situation? You know, what did I actually learn? What did I take from it? And what I took from it is number one, that all the people in the cast were incredible. So a huge shout out to Jared, Justin, Liz, Cortarius, Kayla, Dania, Spirit, Miko, and Elizabeth. All of them, great friends of mine, Great to have them in my network and connections. So love you all so, so much. That, those cherished memories and the time we were able to spend there, I will just very much cherish that for the rest of my life. And now I have connections with these people for the rest of my life. We have a group chat that we chat on all the time. And it is so much fun to see what's going on in everybody's worlds and all those kind of things. So with that said, um... I don't think I'm going to say too much more. I think we're going to end up the episode right there. But if you're listening to this and there's questions you have about my experience on Is It Cake, please send them to me. Send them to me on Instagram, on my email, pete at mightybaker.com. Send them anywhere because um, I'd love to answer more questions. Maybe what I'll do is do like a Facebook Live or Twitter, or not Twitter, um, TikTok Live um, and be on there for questions one of these days. Anyway, but if anybody's out there um, that has any other questions and wants to hear any other kind of perspectives on things, um, please let me know. And I'm going to do my best to get the other cast members on my podcast because I think that would just be 
an incredible experience and incredible for all of you out there to hear a little about a little bit about from them and what they have going on and what's next for them. Anyway, you guys are all awesome. Have a wonderful, mighty day. Love you all and see you later. Thanks for tuning in to the Mighty Baker Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform to help us improve and reach more listeners. Don't hesitate to reach out to us on social media or through our website if you have any questions or feedback. Keep baking, stay inspired, and see you on the next episode.